Hi everyone, welcome to the first pathology um, video. Today we're going to do pattern recognition in the innate immune system. So the innate uh, immune system is something you are born with. And this immune system attempts to find patterns. Um, so also the innate immune system is very powerful. It's the most powerful immune response, more powerful than an adaptive immune system. Um, insects like cockroaches, um, they don't have an adaptive immune response and this just emphasizes that how, how powerful this immune response is because cockroaches have been living in harsh conditions for millions of years and they managed to survive. So, okay, so the most important defense is an intact, uh, intact mucous membrane or skin. Um, it's mostly the inner layer because the outer layer of the skin is dead and most microbes can't live on dead tissue. So why are the mucous membrane important? Um, because they have natural antibiotic antimicrobial peptides, they secrete antibodies, they are motile, they move the whole time and the pathogen can't really build on something that is moving and it also has commensal flora which is um, responsible for protecting the body as well so the major ones are it has natural antimicrobial peptides it secretes antibodies it is motile and it has commensal flora okay so when the innate immune system recognizes a bug how does this process work how does um, this recognition work okay so First off, it is very important for the cell to recognize if a pathogen is intracellular or extracellular so that the appropriate defense mechanisms can be triggered. So, in a, as a rule, viruses are nucleic, um, nucleic acids, so they should be intracellular. Um, streptococcus and staphylococcus, they are extracellular. And things like Neisseria, um, mycoplasma, TB, and those things, and even Ligonella are intracellular. Um, okay, yeah, so here you can see gram negative, um, it's in the Syria, and here you can see clusters, uh, gram positive. So, this is probably Staphylococcus clusters, gram positive, but yeah, okay, so, um. So once the pathogen passes through the mucosal membrane, it will set up a process of inflammation. This inflammation primes the cell to be on the lookout for some of these structures, which we call PAMP, which is pattern associated, uh, I mean pathogen associated molecular patterns. So the cell, once the pathogen passes through the mucosal barrier, um, it will set up the um, cell to look out for pathogen associated molecular patterns or PM. And what will the cell be on a lookout for? It will be look on a lookout for things that mammalian cells don't have. So it will be on a lookout for flagellae, for liposaccharides in gram negative bacteria, peptidoglycan in um, gram positive bacteria, and it will also be on a lookout for double stranded RNA and single-stranded DNA. So what is the major classes of total, um, of um, pattern recognition receptors? So this is the receptors that will recognize when the cell um, is penetrated by a pathogen. So um, you get toll-like receptors. These are found um, everywhere throughout the body um, and they will be on the lookout for microbial products. Then you get the complement system um, any cell without human defense mechanism. And then you get the nod receptors, that will be mostly on the lookout for tetoglycan. Nod receptors are mostly found in the gastrointestinal tract. And then you get um, recognition receptor CD14, which will look out for liposaccharides. And also path um, pattern recognition receptors um, that will detect extracellular pathogens will be extracellular. Pattern recognition receptors that uh, are on the lookout for intracellular, intracellular pathogens will be intracellular. And it's also important to note that 
all human cells have pattern recognition receptors. Um, so any cell in the liver, kidney, everywhere, it has pattern receptor, um, um, pattern recognition molecules. But the specialized cells, such as phagocytes, uh, they will have more of these path uh, pattern recognition receptors. Okay, so let's look at the complement pathway. Um, so it is no need to know this pathway, but you have to know the three activations, the three ways of activating, and you also have to know the three end products. Um, so let's look at the three ways of activation. So the first one is classical. This is activated by an antibody. And then you get the mannose binding lectin, which is this big carbohydrate. And then you also have the alternative pathway. The alternative pathway is it will act uh, act on non-mammalian cells by seeing that these cells have uh, the receptors that other human cells don't have. Um, yeah, so this is the three activations. Um, then let's look at the three end products. So opsonization. So opsonization is just how you prepare a cell to be phagocytized or to be lysed. Um, it's how you make your cornflakes in the morning, you put milk, sugar. So this is what opsonization is. It's, it prepares the cell. Uh, it prepares the cell to be phagocytosed. Then the next is chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is just uh, a process where leukocytes are attracted to a specific area down a concentration gradient. And also it is important to know that opsonization uh, is associated with C3B and C4B, where chemotaxis is um, associated with C3A and C5A. And then the next one is the membrane attack complex, and the membrane attack complex is C5 to C9, and it is very important in fighting Neisseria infections, um, yeah, such as Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Um, yeah. Okay, and then also the complement system is extremely, extremely powerful. And the complement system needs to be actively inhibited in order for the complement system not to um, give a response. So um, when the complement system goes rogue, it can cause a state of chronic inflammation, which can lead to uh, some serious diseases, such as this disease that we see here, which is called um, angionecrotic edema um, and this is when the complement goes um, rogue and also the complement is regulated by two factors factor H and factor I this is very important to remember that the complement system is regulated by these two factors factor H and factor I um, yeah this is some of the um, disorders this angionecrotic um, neurotic edema is also genetics so it's genetic basis then you also get this paroxysmal nu uh, nucleotide hemoglobinia, um, which is just, it um, causes the blood cells to mutate um, and it can result in cell lysis, which means that um, no cells are produced in the bone marrow. Uh, I also wrote here, it is very important to note that if you don't have some of the early complements, such as complements C3 and C4, you can't protect yourself against infection um, and this will be a massive problem and it might lead to death, uh, early death. And also if you have a deficiency in the membrane metac complex C5 to C9, um, you will be very leave high and dry when you get an Assyria infection because this is very important in Assyria meningitis and gonorrhea infections. So let's look at the toll-like receptors and nod um, receptors. So there are about 10 toll-like receptors in the human body. And as a rule, the, uh, the extracellular pathogens are um, regulated by toll-like receptor 2 to 6, whereas the uh, uh, intracellular uh, microbes are regulated by toll-like receptor 7 to 9. So... The extracellular ones is toll receptor 2, which is, uh, it will recognize peptidoglycan. And then toll receptor 4 will recognize liposaccharides. And then toll receptor 5 will recognize fimbrate. 
this is all extracellular and then intracellular um tau like receptor 7 and 8 will recognize single stranded rna and then tau like receptor 9 will recognize microbial dna okay and then moving on to nod receptors so um nod receptors um, they are very important and the reason why they are important and they are mainly, mostly found in the gastrointestinal intestinal tract is that within the gastrointestinal intestinal tract there is a lot of microbes a lot of commensal flora in the gastrointestinal tract and the human body can't give a response to every natural flora or commensal flora uh, in, within the gastrointestinal intestinal tract therefore the nod receptors are there to be triggered when a uh, commensal flora uh, pathogen passes through the mucosal membrane then a response will be made uh, if one responds to every intestinal flora you will be in a chronic state of inflammation which will lead to tissue damage and organ dysfunction okay so a pattern is recognized um, a pattern recognition molecule recognizes a pathogen so what happens now so when one of these path uh, pattern pathogen um, recognition um, molecules senses a pathogen it will stimulate the pathway called the nfkb which is uh, which stands for the nuclear factor kappa b pathway and this pathway will downstream activate um, genes which will, which will result in cytokine excretion, anti-apoptic genes, and leukocyte recruitment, such as hemotaxis. And also, I wrote here, once again, um, if the receptors are constantly triggered, the body will be continuously be inflamed, and this will lead to tissue damage and organ dysfunction. And also, I wrote here, once again, how important factor H and factor I is, because it regulates the complement system, and the complement system needs to be actively regulated, uh, inhibited, um, and it's very extremely powerful. Um, therefore, factor H and factor I is so important. And yeah, thanks for listening to the first lecture or the first video on pattern recognition in the innate immune system. Um, yeah, like and, um, like and subscribe. Cheers.